I'm Liz Fenwick. I have a DIY YouTube channel, Liz Fenwick DIY. As you can imagine, I've had my fair share of DIY fails. Each week, I will break down my DIY failures and the craziest fails that you send in. If you have a story you'd like us to share on a future podcast, email us at stories at lizfamickdiy.com. Hey everyone, welcome to DIY Disasters. I'm your host, Liz Fenwick. If you follow me on YouTube, you know my main job is DIYing. And with DIYing comes a ton of fails. And I've definitely had a lot of fails over the years. And so I wanted to put together a lighthearted, fun, entertaining podcast where I share with you some of my best DIY disasters and share your DIY disasters. So I've asked you guys to send in via email your best DIY disasters to share with me. I had to bring on my husband Chris because he is definitely roped into all of my DIYs. So he is at the forefront of these DIYs. He's my partner in crime. So Chris is here with us today. Hey everyone. Okay, Chris. So the first one we're going to talk about, the title of this story is Popcorn Ceilings. <laughs> This was probably the first big DIY project that Chris and I worked on together. We renovated a duplex back in 2006. This was like, we were kids. We were so young doing this. It was our first like everything. We had no idea what we were doing. Picture not really knowing what you're doing and deciding I'm going to take the biggest step I can possibly do and got an entire building and redo it all. You know, we didn't start small. We just went straight. In. But because we were so young, we were fearless. Yeah. And we thought, yeah, we'll just do this. We yeah. had no hesitation. We'll just learn as mm -hmm. we go. It was a huge project. We were clueless. We would watch YouTube videos to teach us how to do everything and literally everything. And we were lucky to, you know, we had like some older adults who would come in and help us and our family. Chris would be at Home Depot asking the people who work there for advice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was always picking everybody's brain. <laughs> like if any type of construction conversation would come up, I would just try to be a sponge, you yeah. know, in those situations. But I wanted to tell you guys one of the funnier stories from that renovation, and there's several, but it's when we had to repair the popcorn ceilings. We had popcorn ceilings throughout our entire duplex. And initially, I really wanted to scrape them off. And you remember that, that we wanted to scrape oh, them yeah. off? Yeah. But we both both kind of decided that that was out of our comfort zone at the time. We didn't really know how that would happen. And we tried to do everything ourselves because we wanted to do it as budget friendly as possible. We decided to keep the popcorn ceiling, but because this was, wasn't it like 1970s, our duplex? It oh, was yeah. old. We had several areas where the popcorn ceiling had come off, so it needed to be repaired. And so we did a little research and found a product that looks like spray paint. You're supposed to spray it on your ceiling and it will magically blend into your popcorn ceiling. And it was only a couple of dollars. Like this mm. was magic. We thought this mm. is going to be great. Problem solved. Yeah, yeah. We thought let's just try it out. <laughs> Now, luckily, when we first used this product, we did not have any flooring down. So that was nice because when you sprayed it on your ceiling, it went absolutely everywhere. Most likely more popcorn product got on us than the ceiling. Yeah, I mean, it had like a, it should have had something on the bottle as a warning. It's got a 10 foot kill radius because it just, it goes everywhere. And it gets on everyone and anything in its path. Very little of it actually went on the ceiling. Yeah, like. that's the crazy part is probably 90% of what you were trying to spray up there did not end up where you wanted it. It ended up. <laughs> and you would just like hold it up and spray it. And it then like you would duck and cover. I just yeah. remember you just like hiding after, <laughs> after you'd spray it. And I'd have to call out like a <laughs> warning shot. Like, hey, I'm about ready to do this, everyone. Back away, you know. Yeah, and the funny part is that we ended up having to use it several times. We would just find new parts of the ceiling that oh. needed to be patched. It was such a messy job that I honestly would kind of tell you to do it every time, I think. Well, or you would be... Now the secret's out, I guess. Like, no would, wonder. This makes sense. Because you would be I nominated. Yeah. <laughs> Voluntold. Yeah. And I feel like I would silently crack up as the popcorn ceiling mess would fall on you every time. That is awful. <laughs> I don't know why you would laugh at something like that. It but... was so funny. I mean, maybe I just cracked up out loud. I don't even. <laughs> I didn't hear anything going on except the sound of that stuff just exploding all over everything and just 
I mean, did it even do a good job? Did it even cover the ceiling? Eventually it would, but it was never consistent about the way that it would go on. I remember a couple of times thinking, I thought one can would cover this, <laughs> and it didn't. So we'd have to go back and get another can. You would constantly be go- going yeah, and buying. That was the most common trip to any of those home stores. And like, heaven forbid, you go to one and you can't find the exact kind. You're like, I don't trust any of these other products. I only trust the the one that just causes a huge mess because whatever. <laughs> and we never even thought like, maybe we should try something different. Like this isn't yeah. a good idea. Or like calling a drywall person and saying, Hey, I know you do this professionally. Like, tell me how this is done because I'd never seen that kind no. of stuff done before at that no, point. No, we just so. did it ourselves. I feel like we were young. We were just kind of learning. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. a good learning experience. Yeah. Your courage to do, that's the thing about doing things yourself. If you're not afraid to break something try something new. It's great because it's a learning experience. And I think in the end, it makes you more courageous to take next steps up to try to do more things. So like now, if I had to look at that same situation, I would say, yeah, let's scrape it all down, put the the more modern textures on it, like a knockdown or not even a texture at this point. I wouldn't have that courage. But I can tell you every house we've bought since then, I make sure that it's not a popcorn yeah. ceiling. And it's funny how <laughs> these situations like scar you yeah, for you, the future. I, like if it's got popcorn, like we're not going to buy it. Yeah. It's, I can't even look uh, at a popcorn ceiling. It's just not. Yeah. All right, Chris, do you have any more thoughts on popcorn ceilings? Just don't. Just don't. If you can't. Ever. I don't yeah. even know the correct advice to give our listeners on how to patch a popcorn ceiling. Don't patch it. Just take it all down. I mean, I know yeah. it sounds extreme, but like I looking back on it now, I think I probably would have learned a lot more and probably would have learned that it was a lot easier to take it To off scrape to, it, yeah. Than to, than to go through the trouble of trying to patch something that was, you know, in that case, like, what was it? 30 years old almost like yeah trying to make the texture match and everything so. yeah it was just bad well thanks for joining us today chris in our sure. next segment i'm going to be sharing some of your best diy disasters This first story is from Christina. Hello, Liz. My DIY nightmare was when I bought my last house, which was a true fixer upper. It was an 1880s farmhouse in northern New Hampshire. Every room needed something, so it seemed logical to start with the kitchen. The heart and the hub of the home makes sense to me. I did the cleaning, moved a few cabinets around to function better, got new appliances, and was ready to make this massive kitchen, which was 17 feet by 30 feet my own. Wow, that's a big kitchen. I set aside a week for painting the walls and cabinets, picked out the colors that felt warm but bright at the same time. I eagerly dove into painting in about March, April, just as the snow was melting on our mountainside home. The cabinets were going to be a nice sage green. All was going along smoothly until one morning after applying a coat of paint to the cabinets, I heard a massive crash in the kitchen. All of our people and pets were safe and in different rooms, so I slowly walked to the kitchen. What I came across, I could not believe. Half of the ceiling had fallen down down due to the weight of the melting snow on the roof above it and it was a disaster. My beautiful freshly painted cabinets were destroyed by loose blown in insulation that the previous owner had done. The lovely paint job was covered by clumps of this insulation and I needed to start all over again. Just this time was a bit more labor intensive with having to remove the insulation and fresh paint from the cabinets. Oh my goodness. And of course this happened right after she just spent all this time creating this. I just feel for you so bad on this. Needless to say, my motivation was lost as a result and I did not start on painting again for several months. Christina, I do not blame you. This is horrible. I would just be devastated. As frustrating as it was, it does make for a good story. You know, sometimes things just happen that way where you're like, I did all this work and then it was just ruined. And you're like, why? Why did this happen? I, oh my gosh, I feel for you so much in that story. That is such a disaster. (music) 
This next story is from Tracy. Hi, Liz. Many years ago, I saw a hack to quickly fix the ugly popcorn ceiling. So if you didn't get enough info on how to horribly fix popcorn ceiling, let's see if Tracy has a better option for us. Before the internet and YouTube, there were home improvement and decorating shows. Yes, I remember being like HGTV all the time. I was just watching it constantly. I can't specifically remember where I saw the popcorn ceiling hack, but I do remember it was one of those types of programs. I chose to try it in our half bathroom. They made it look so simple. Just cover the popcorn ceiling with spackling compound. Oh, we never even thought about that. It looked like a smoother stucco and it was so much better than the popcorn that we had. You could swirl it in for a fancy design or trowel it flatter and then just wait a few days for it to dry completely. Once I got it up there, the popcorn was deeper than I thought. So I opted for the swirl technique that they talked about. Well, it took a lot to cover the popcorn and the pattern looked more like fingers in a swirl pattern. I used so much compound in such a small section. We were worried that the rest of the ceiling would become too heavy. It looked horrible. I abandoned the project and hoped someday to just scrape the whole ceiling. I wish I had tested the theory on a piece of wood or something first. I feel like that's a trend in so many of these stories is people being like, I just went for it and DIY'd. And I think sometimes the idea of trying something out on just a small piece of wood or another piece of drywall is really important. We get so impatient and we just want to jump in and try it. But on something where you can't really take it down as easily, I think Tracy is so right that she should have just tried it on a small piece of wood or something beforehand. Fast forward to when we refinanced our house and had an inspector come out. He asked my husband if we had a leak in the ceiling and tried to repair it. Oh my goodness. And my husband told him, no, that was my wife's attempt to DIY and hide the popcorn. (laughs) The man shook his head and gave me the stink eye. It was so embarrassing. My husband has never let me live it down. We never fixed it. We never really knew what to do with it. I mean... Popcorn ceilings are the worst. And I think like Chris said, honestly, there's really nothing you can do with them except for just try to scrape them and put knockdown on your ceiling or something different. Popcorn ceilings are the worst. I mean, now I would probably have someone come out and do it. But if you're on a tight budget, like we were when we did it, you really have to figure out something to do yourself. And ceilings and the texture on it could just be so messy and just something no one wants to deal with. So our next story is from Leah. It was the middle of summer and I had been looking at all of the new room trends online trying to find the right style for me. The home decor trends I like the most are colorful, modern, and Paris themed. My favorite colors to decorate with are pink, black, and white. My sister had just moved out and she had left some of her old bedroom decorations behind including a set of old LED pastel colored lights. They had looked so nice in her bedroom I thought I would give them a try in my room. She had originally hung them up with thumbtacks, so I did the same. I spent a whole day setting the lights up, trying to find the best way to attach them to an outlet so I could easily turn them on and off, but that in and itself was a fail. I had to settle with turning off the lights by unplugging and plugging them back into the wall. I stepped back to admire my work It didn't look amazing, but it looked pretty good. I spent so much time on this project, but it still didn't look the way I wanted it to. Maybe I thought to myself it would look a lot better without all of those wires showing. I was very unpleasantly surprised at all of the damage the thumbtacks did to my wall. It was covered in deep light holes. My parents helped me fill in the walls, sand it down, and repaint it. I was grateful for their help, but I wish I had just found a better way to hang up my lights. I learned my lesson. Now, every time I hang something up, I use poster tack. 
So I think LED lights right now are such a popular trend and they have some great options that you can use instead of, you know, using regular lights or using thumbtacks. There are definitely great renter friendly options. They have these strip lights that you can get off of Amazon. I would recommend using these instead of like a Christmas style light. You can also get battery operated ones that even come with remotes to avoid using thumbtacks or pushing them into walls. You can get ones that have a sticky strip on them or some of them have command strips so you can hang them directly on your wall. So if you have a teenager or younger child who's wanting to add these to your walls, you don't have to damage your walls in any way. Just grab one of the battery pack ones off of Amazon. Honestly, there's so many of them right now because they're super popular. Another option besides putting them on your walls is you could also just add them to your headboard. I've seen people add them around the edge of the headboard and that looks really neat as well. I just bought a battery pack that I added as like an under cabinet light in my kitchen. Those looked really cool and I picked those up off of Amazon. So there's definitely a ton of options available. So with this episode, I was trying to come up with some tips for you guys. And one of the things that I was thinking about was the difference between when you should DIY and when you should hire a pro. And I feel like there's some questions that you just have to ask yourself to determine, are you going to do the DIY yourself? Or are you going to hire a pro? Now, let's face it, when we're starting off and we don't have a lot of money and our budget is super thin, a lot of times you just have to DIY stuff. I mean, when Chris and I started out, we didn't have any money. So we relied on family members that could provide us with help and we just had to DIY. But if you have the budget and you can consider it, here are the questions I want you to ask yourself to determine if you want to DIY or hire a pro. First, can you make the time for it? Do you have the time in your schedule to get it done? Do you have the tools? Because think about it, if you have to DIY it and you have to buy all these tools, are you going to spend more money in tools versus just hiring somebody? Second, do you have the skills or are there others that you can rely on to help you? Do you have a family member who can come in and help? Are you willing to you know, watch YouTube videos to educate yourself to gain those skills? So if you answered yes to those questions, I feel like DIY is probably the most likely answer for you for your particular project. So whenever Chris and I start any project, we start by trying to learn everything we can to really help us be successful with that project. And another tip we try to do is we start whatever project we're doing in an inconspicuous area. Do not start laying your floors at the top of the stairs where everybody is gonna walk in and see them. You wanna start where it's not gonna be as big of a deal if you have a little mess up. And we also ask for help from family and friends just to even give us advice on how to make a project happen. And if you determine that you need to hire somebody, here's some things that I want you to keep in mind. Ask for recommendations from your friends and family. My neighborhood has this Facebook group that people will just like call out like, hey, can you give me recommendations for an electrician? Can you give me recommendations for somebody to, you know, redo the stairs? And then people will just put their recommendations on there. So a lot of times in community Facebook groups, that's a great way to find someone to hire. Another thing I recommend is to get three bids. We are looking at refinishing our hardwood floors in our downstairs, and I got three bids. And I have to tell you, the difference between those bids were thousands of dollars. You really want to just get a variety of bids because it makes a huge difference. And then you want to determine who you want to work with, not solely based on the price, but who you feel like has the expertise and somebody that you feel like you're going to be comfortable working with through this project. And you can also check Yelp for reviews or like Google search to try to learn as much as you can about the companies before you hire them. And don't feel like you have to DIY everything. I DIY for a living and there's definitely things that we hire out because someone with better expertise is going to do a better job than we are. So I want to thank everyone that sent in a story to us. And if you're new to the podcast, which most of you are, because this is a brand new podcast, make sure you subscribe. It's just going to really help us out and you'll just get notified when we put out a new episode. I want to thank Chris for coming on and Delaney, my content manager behind the scenes. And we'll talk to you guys in our next episode. Bye. If you have a story you'd like us to share on a future podcast, email us at stories at 